Surviving La Lucha in Ciudad Juarez, an anthropological reflection on the Cuban community in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, by Victor Vasquez and Stephanie Morales. The following article presents a brief anthropological and historical reflection based on the Cuban community in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. Additionally, we discuss important historical aspects that have contributed to the development of the Cuban community in El Paso, Texas, Ciudad Juarez, CH border, such as the migrant caravans that occurred between 2017 through 2019, and the migratory policies that have been put into F effect. Furthermore, we present an ethnographic analysis on the migration experience of certain participants, placing an emphasis on creating created networks and expanding on the concept of community through spatial solidarity and survival in Ciudad Juarez. Plabas Clave, Estudios Fronteros, Ciudad Juarez, Migrants Cubanos. I will not be able to read the resume because I, my Spanish is horrible, so I will do my best. El siguiente artículo presenta una breve reflexión antropológica a historia sobre la comunidad cubana residente en Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico, Aramis se discreten los aspectos Dos históricos más importantes ocurridos en la región de la frontera que aportan al desarrollo de esta comunidad, como lo vieron las caravanas de inmigrantes entre los años 2017 to 2017 y las reformas políticas migratorias de parte de Estados Unidos y México. Por otro lado, se discute un análisis etro, etnográfico sobre la experiencia migratoria de algunos miembros hacienda énfasis en la construcción de redes y el desarrollo del concepto comunidad como una especie de solidaridad y sobrevivencia en la sociedad guaranense Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Introduction. The following article presents a brief anthropological and historical reflection based on the Cuban community in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. Additionally, we discuss important historical aspects that have contributed to the development of this community, such as the migrant caravans that occurred between 2017 through 2019 and the migratory policy reforms that have been put into effect by the U.S. government and how it affects border policies. Furthermore, we present a brief ethnographic analysis on the migration experience of participants of, the community, of this community and how they arrived in Ciudad Juarez as part of the migrant caravans. In fact, we discuss how the members of the Cuban community created networks and build the concept of community through spatial solidarity to survive in Ciudad Juarez. Lastly, we aim, our aim for this anthropological reflection is to make visible the living conditions and major vicissitudes that the members of the Cuban community have faced in this new countryside. For the purpose of this article, we use the term in Spanish, la lucha, which means the struggle in reference to the ethnographic research conducted by Kaifa Roland 
2010, who conducted her ethnographic work in Cuban society and originally used the term as a metaphor to describe the struggle to live in Cuba. The background and connection to Cuban migrants in Ciudad Juarez. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Why the Cuban community... This is a vital question that needs to be asked to better understand the focus of this article. Beginning in 2017, the population of downtown Juarez changed dramatically due to the impact of the migrant caravans that arrived at the border. As a result of the migrant caravan and the economic opportunities offered in the city, Avienda Avenido Juarez began to revitalize and reminded us of the prosperous years of downtown Juarez. For instance, new Cuban restaurants and bars, souvenir shops, and an increase in pedestrian traffic. Traveling back and forth between Ciudad Juarez and El Paso could be observed. Downtown Juarez became full of life. Within this context, the Cuban migrants began to draw attention from the locals and the local media due to their entrepreneurialism and their working presence in the area. Other actions that characterize the Cuban presence on the border has been the public protests in 2020 and 2021 held at the downtown International Bridge, La Palaca 2020. <clears throat> the protests are held to pressure local and federal authorities to allow the Cuban migrants to cross into the United States, all these circumstances drew our attention as academics at, from the University of Texas at El Paso. From 2019 to 2020, we traveled to downtown Juarez to begin a fieldwork experience as part of a sociology master thesis to understand the impact in this urban context, particularly the difference between the multiple migrant groups who came from El Salvador Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and Cuba, who participate in these caravans. The first phase of the field work consisted of visiting Centro de Atención a Migrants Came, located behind the Santa Fe International Bridge. Throughout our multiple visits, we had the opportunity to meet several members of the Cuban community who recounted their experiences as migrants living in Ciudad Juarez. The analysis will focus on the interviews that were conducted with members of this group who work in construction, restaurants, bars, cashiers, and other activities who tell us the struggles they have encountered while arriving at the border. Although the increase of the migrant population in downtown Juarez brought life in 2019, this movement decreased in 2020 due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Before beginning our analysis, we will discuss a brief literature review on the migrant crisis in Ciudad Juarez from 2016 to present. A brief literature review on the migrant crisis at the border. The following literature review discusses a brief historical analysis regarding migration policy reforms that have affected the U.S. border in the last decade especially the impact in Ciudad Juarez in order to understand the complexity of life on the border. We must first understand the context of the situation of how U.S. policies impact border towns, border town residents, and general migrants. This literature review will begin by focusing on policies set forth by former President Obama 2008 to 2016, placing an emphasis on articles by Kelly Bogart 2018. In Keeping the Dream Alive, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and The Necessary Next Step, Benjamin Roth 2018, and The Double Bind of DACA, Exploring the Legal Violence of Liminal Status for Undocumented Youth, Christina Campbell 2018, in The Legal Violence of Liminal statues status for undocumented youth i'm so sorry dreamers deferred the broken promise of immigration reform in the obama years and other scholars who discuss migratory topics such as daca and how immigration was enforced under obama presidency 
Secondly, we will examine former President Trump's 2016 to 2020 zero tolerance approach to immigration and discuss the remain in Mexico policy that was enacted by his administration by exploring research conducted by the following researchers, Fabrega, Vignelles, Marabent, and Myers 2020. In They Are Brothers, the migrant caravan in the D Disaporic, Diasporic Press, Mukpo 2020 and Asylum Seekers Stranded in New in Mexico Face a New Danger COVID-19, Jeremy Slack 2019 and Deported to Death, and others. Lastly, we will discuss how the migratory process, policies that have been sanctioned by the U.S. government negatively affected migrants and put them in an increased danger, citing periodicals by Ch Chapel 2019 and Martinez Prado 2019. Immigration was one of the most pressing issues of the last decade, which led to several policies and executive orders that have helped shape the immigration system that we have today. One of these executive orders was the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, that was created by former President Obama. DACA allowed those who had been brought to the U.S. before the age of 16 to work and attend school as long as they met specific standards, such as being in school, graduating high school, being military member, among others. It is estimated that around 800,000 undocumented migrants were able to obtain work permits and deportation relief through DACA, Bogart, 2018. Although DACA re offers recipients a way to legally work and attend school in the U.S., they live under what Roth 2018 refers to as lim liminal legality, in which recipients are allowed to live in the U.S. legally, but do not have the same rights for as U.S. citizens. Living in this legal gray area makes recipients vulnerable to legal violence, especially in states where there is harsh anti-immigrant rhetoric. Even with the protections that DACA offers recipients, many continue to live in fear. Registering as DACA recipients entails coming out as undocumented to the U.S. government, which means that living inconspicuously is no longer an option, thus putting themselves and their families at risk for possible deportation in the future. Bechera, 2018. The fear has become more pervasive in recent years due to former President Trump's attempts to repeal DACA. It has been argued that Dreamers or DACA recipients offered offer a romanticized image of the immigrant of immigrants one that depicts them as being innocent victims worthy of the American dream. Campbell, 2018. The popular depiction of the of dreamers as the ideal immigrant reinforces the belief that those who are deported are unworthy because they do not meet the expectational standards outlined in our national discourse. Stack, 2019, Slack, 2019, argues that this leads to social death in which deported immigrants are seen as unworthy and guilty in the eyes of society by residents in Mexico and the U.S. Dreamers may be deported if they commit a crime or fail to renew their DACA status because DACA recipients are were brought to the U.S. before age 16. Most of them speak English and anglicized English, not remembering much about their home countries. Their Americanness makes them vulnerable targets when they are deported to border cities such as Tijuana or Ciudad Juarez. Drug cartels prey on newly deported dreamers who are presumed to have resources and capital due to their connections to the in the U.S. Drug cartels see new door deportees as potential recruits or sources of money which can be collected through ransom by kidnapping deportees and calling family in the U.S. for money, Slack 2019. 
The Obama administration utilized aggressive tactics to enforce immigration, and it can be argued that these tactics are what helped shape the way uh, for former President Trump's zero-tolerance approach to immigration. More people are deported under the Obama administration than in previous 100 years before his presidency, Campbell 2018. According to Street, Zepeda, Milan, and Jones Carrera, two, 2015, the Obama administration issues removals for over 2 million undocumented immigrants in his first five years in office, a level that was 1.6 times higher than the average under the Republican pre predecessor, George W. Bush. It is important to note that the Obama administration focused on deporting those with criminal convictions and recently arrived undocumented Im immigrants, Kim and Cement, 2020. An unprecedented number of asylum seekers were held in detention centers along the U.S.-Mexico border under the Obama administration, Campbell, 2018, <clears throat> a practice that continued to become even crueler under former President Trump through the enforcement of family separation at the detention centers family separation, kids being held in cages, and the unsanitary conditions found in the detention centers have yielded a large number of protests in many areas across the U.S. globally. The migrant figures have become, has become a scapegoat and has been held to extreme, extreme scrutiny, which has resulted in fear and increased hatred in many nations, Slot 2019. Currently, President Joe Biden has announced his promise to defend the, the DACA recipient community in the United States and to avoid any kind of deportation. This announcement represents hope for DACA recipients, the migrant community living in the United States and the hopeful migrants awaiting their court dates in Mexican border towns who have all faced increased harassment and uncertainty under the Trump presidency due, due to the migrant narrative that was pushed and associated with stereotypical discourses of hate and criminality. Therefore, the proposed Biden presidential policy regarding migrants will have a new approach focused on human rights, which will be valued before anything else. In conclusion, the migrant population at the border deserves better treatment and a more just and humane policy that allows them to improve their living conditions, whilst acknowledging that migrants are humans and not criminals. Cuban Migratory Reforms The dynamic between the U.S.-Cuba relationship Radically changed in 2014 under former President Obama, negotiations on diplomatic relations with former President Raul Castro began and there were mo modifications to the previous U.S. embargo against Cuba and on the restrictions to travel from the U.S. to Cuba as part of normalization, normalizing regulations between both nations. The wet foot, dry foot policy was eliminated to, in 2017. Rodriguez targeted 2018. The eradication of the wet foot, dry foot policy ended the privileges that the Cuban political asylees held and as a result are no longer given special considerations. When requesting asylum, former President Trump, however, reversed some of the politi policies regarding Cuba that were enacted in the Obama administration. Cuba is being considered a security threat and an adversary to the U.S. once again. Rodriguez Targ, 2018. Despite the reversal of several policies, the removal on the wet foot, dry foot policy has not been put back in place. The removal of the F aforementioned policy along with former President Trump's implementation of the remain in Mexico policy have largely contributed to the influx of Cuban asylum seekers that find themselves in the Ciudad Juarez. The, affront, the aforementioned reforms have considerably affected the everyday life in border cities across Mexico, including Ciudad Juarez. Most of the most of the border cities have transformed into host 
and shelter cities in which thousands of migrants are waiting and expecting to cross the border into the U.S. In this context, we observe the Cuban migrants in Ciudad Juarez that are living in indefinite transit waiting to cross the border into the U.S. in the near future. The migrant caravans impact between 2018 to 2020 in downtown Ciudad Juarez, El Centro. To understand how life in, on the border is currently experienced, we must explore recent migratory patterns such as migrant caravans that have resulted in harsh policies like the Migrant Protection Protocol according to Vaharla Weta and McLean. 2019 migrant caravans began making their way to, from Central America through Mexico to the U.S. in 2011. However, the caravans increased in 2018, with the last one comprising between 4,000 and 7,000 migrants. Fabricate Vinyls Marabint Myers, 2020. The caravans were highly pol politicized and became a hot button issue during the 2018 midterm elections, in which former President Trump framed the situation as an invasion and used the caravans to push his anti-immigrant rhetoric and social sociological discourse of criminalization even further. Fabergette Vinyls Meyer Brent Myers, 2020. The Migrant Protection Protocol, MPP, or Remain in Mexico Policy, as it is commonly known, was announced in January 2019 by the Trump administration as a political response to the caravans that were arriving at the U.S. border. Through MPP, the Trump administration has attempted to critically curtail asylum in the U.S. even when it was already difficult to obtain to illustrate the average denial rates for asylum seekers from Guatemala. Oops, already difficult to obtain to illustrate the average denial rates for asylum seekers from Guatemala are 77%, 80% for Honduras, and 90% for Mexicans. Sat 2019. Asylum is extremely hard to receive if the asylum seeker does not have legal representation, which of the case for most. And these are the photos. I'll kind of get close on those. MPP requires asylum seekers to wait in Mexico while their asylum claims are processed. In the U.S., a timeline, 2019, it is estimated that over 60,000 asylum seekers have been affected by this policy. Mukpo, 2020. Most of these asylum seekers currently reside in Mexican border cities such as Ciudad Juarez, where they stay in overcrowded shelters, cheap hotels, homes, and even tents near the ports to, of entry. Asylum seekers have changed the culture in downtown Ciudad Juarez, an area in the city that struggled to bounce back after the 2008 recession. The downtown area is now thriving with new restaurants and stores that have been opened by the entrepreneurial migrants who now reside in the border. Cities such as Cubans in Ciudad Juarez, although migrants living in border cities were able to, are able to make money, they continue to struggle and face a great number of challenges when attempting to cross the border into the U.S. MPP puts asylum seekers in danger, especially in cities such as Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, where crime and violence are rampant. Just as with new deportees, Cartel members prey on asylum seekers who may not be familiar with the cultural norms of a new country and may not have a social network to rely on. In September 2019, a shelter in Ciudad Juarez that housed asylum seekers was robbed by three masked men. They held the migrants at gunpoint and threatened to kill them while they took migratory documents, cell phones, clothes, and even clothing supplies. Martinez Prado, 2019. In a separate instance, according to Presidio or Paradiso Cubano, 2020, a poster board was posted outside a popular downtown Cuban restaurant in Ciudad Juarez, starting that 
stating that Cubans needed to stop causing problems at the ports of entry if they wanted to avoid being murdered. These are just two examples of the everyday violence and struggles asylum seekers face while living in Mexico. Frustration, fear, and lack of resources sometimes lead asylum seekers affected by MPP to attempt to cross the, the U.S. border illegally. In fact, the political instability of migrant policies has led despaired migrants to risk their lives and attempt more dangerous crossings to reach the U.S. For instance, a well-documented case of the drowned migrants, Leme Grante Ahagado Consujia, better known as the as Oscar Alberto Martinez Ramirez. Martinez Ramirez, his wife and daughter of 23 months, arrived at Brownsville, Texas from El Salvador to request asylum, but they were but were required to wait in Mexico to, for their asylum cases to be processed. After two months of waiting at a migrant camp, Martinez Ramirez decided to cross into the U.S. by crossing the, the Rio Grande. The strong tide led him and his daughter to drown before his wife's eyes. Chapel, 2019. While undocumented immigrants from Mexico can blend in most during most of their travels through Mexico, Central Americans cannot. For Mexicans, deportation exposes them as foreign in their land as engaging with a dangerous activity of migration, Slack 2019. At the same time, Central Americans and other groups of migrants find themselves in greater amounts of danger due to unfamiliar culture and physical terrains. See photo of drowned migrants capture pathos of those who risk it. All the New York Times New, dot com. In some, these section re illustrates how how two different presidents and political parties approached immigration and have contributed to the instability found along the border. Migrants and asylum seekers are prawns, are pawns for the political parties in the U. in the United States, which set forth policies that continue to the cycle of poverty for asylum seekers and make them vulnerable to different forms of exploitation by cartels. This, in turn, results in double victimization by two different entities, American po political parties who fixate on migratory issues as a way to remain in political power and drug cartels who look to exploit and recruit new members to increase their power in Mexico. Thus, comprehensive immigration reform is needed, one that is more human, humane and does not criminalize migrants who seek opportunity and safety. The Cubans in downtown El Centro De Ciudad Juarez 2019-2020 fieldwork experiences the journey from Cuba to Ciudad Juarez. Most of the Cuban migrants who were interviewed followed the same path toward the border. Some of them left Cuba on an airplane and flew directly to Mexico City. From there, most of them took a Guajaga or bus to Ciudad Juarez. Other adventurous voyagers traveled by sea from Cuba through Belize, or they crossed the dangerous jungle and exposed their life. Others took buses through Guatemala from and Mexico. Others are victims of coyotes who smuggle them into Mexico. In addition, some Cubans have been smuggled by law enforcement and cartels after paying guetos or being victims of sexual violence. According to our informants, they emphasized how difficult it was to cross Belize and Guatemala and how dangerous their voyage across Mexico was. For example, weather conditions such as monsoon season, transportation conditions, violence throughout Central America, lack food and water, and even have, having motion sickness and no access to medicine. Another interesting observation is that Cuban migrants' ethnic phenotype differs from that of Guatemalans and South, Southern indigenous Mexicans. It was evident that our Cuban informants phenotype was that of the Caribbean, which tends to be of African, European, or mixed mulata descent. 
These characteristics draw attention from the locals in Central America who instantly recognize that the migrants are Cubans, which makes them susceptible to violence in their journey. In conclusion, the path to Ciudad Juarez represents a journey full of risk and danger. Our informants would thank God and feel blessed when they arrived in Ciudad Juarez despite the historical violence encountered in the city, which they preferred over the violence found throughout their journey. Quote from an interview fragment, Los Cabanos in Juarez surviving La Lucha, the economic hardship 2019 to present. What do Cubans do in Juarez? Chico Nostrostos in Juarez. Uh oh. Okay. Tiki si para sobrevivir y cuadramos en Juarez para no regresar a Cuba. Many Cubans are working in Juarez legally and illegally. They work in areas, many areas such as construction, restaurants, supermarkets, bars, and other commercial industries. Others have turned to sex work at some bars in El Centro for an income. For example, as part of our observation, we witnessed some elegant woman from Cuba working as bartenders, wearing provocative clothing, and others as prostitutes, better known in Mexico as para paraditas. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 pandemic, employment opportunities have vastly decreased in El Centro de Juarez. However, our inform informants explain that some Cubans began working at Magatores, convenience stores like Del Rio and as housekeepers who serve the Mexican upper class, while others moved to other cities in Mexico looking for better opportunities in comparison to other migrant groups. Cubans appear eager in regard to the political migratory future now that President Joe Biden is in office. Using this term of la lucha, the Cubans in Ciudad Juarez are struggling in the following adversary adversities. The dangerous journey to Ciudad Juarez, the cancellation of wet foot, dry foot policy, and former president migration, migratory reforms, and the res resulting anti-immigrant discourse in the United States. The employment opportunities that have been reduced to reduced due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the impact of COVID-19 that has caused deaths and serious illness among the Cuban community members living in Ciudad Juarez, the cartel violence and threats against the migrants experienced in Ciudad Juarez. Here are photo two. For Cubans, La Lucha or the struggle employs a wide range of possibilities which has contributed to the newfound diversity in downtown Ciudad Juarez. In Cuba, residents are engaged with anthropological discourse of La Lucha or the struggle referring how, of how to how economic hardships creates a culture of hustling and learning how to make the most of your limited resource rule in 2010. The phrase La Lucha has been documented by American anthropologist Kefa Roland in her research Cuban Color in Tourism and La Lucha, 2010. For this article, we found the phrase La of La Lucha pertinent to understanding the, the vicissitudes so sorry, experimented by the Cuban migrants who arrive in Ciudad Juarez. In fact, according to Roland 2010, in Cuba, La Lucha revolves around the acquisition of dollars to be able to buy necessities. Life in Cuba is not easy. There has been much, there has been a rise in delinquency, alcoholism, and prostitution, along with structural issues such as electricity interpretations caused by a lack of patrol. Holbrod 2014, in Cuba, La Vida es la una lucha. Life is a struggle, both economically and politically. Holbrand, 2014. However, in industrial border cities such as Ciudad Juarez, dollars are not hard to obtain, and Cubans often make four times more than they 
make in Cuba. La lucha for many Cubans has transformed itself from one against an authoritative com communist government and lack of resources to one against cartel violence and navigating new culture. Cuban migrants have had to adapt to their la lucha. I'm sorry, their lucha to new political landscape where even the po police force is corrupted by the cartels and knowledge of border culture and how to avoid drawing attention to oneself are necessary for survival. The ability to Cuban migrants to translate La Lucha into this new context found in Mexican border cities has allowed them to thrive in ways that other migrant groups have not and has resulted in greater amounts of agency. As opposed to other migrant groups, Cubans have been able to prosper in Ciudad Juarez by opening restaurant shops and creating binational Cuban Mex Mexican culture, which can be acknowledged through Cuban Mexican restaurants and their visibility of Cuban and Mexican flags being flown side by side in downtown Ciudad Juarez. Cubans are known to be passionate, a characteristic of the Caribbean. The passion and determination that are charismatic of the Caribbean have allowed Cuban migrants to surpass challenges faced by a new landscape in which attaining economic and cultural capital as is a priority. According to Roland, 2010, La Lucha entails helping one another in Cuba, surviving means having to work together to get social relations with family and friends are important as they are resources that may help you when the needs arises. For example, the Ultimo last system surfaced during the special period when lines were hours long. This system allows people to wait in several lines simultaneously to save time and represents one way in which Cubans have had to improvise in order to maximize the resources available to them, such as time and social relations when goods and resources are scarce, Roland 2010. La botella or hitchhiking is another technique in La Lucha that has been around since the specials period, but has recently been per perfected due to the scarcity of transportation, Roland 2010. These are two specific examples that display how Cubans living in Cuba make use of their social relations and rely on the kindness of their com compatriots to survive. La Lucha. La Lucha has been translated to U.S. settings, settings as well. A study by Barnes and Aguirre analyzed community social support for Cuban refugees in Texas, the researchers found that other Cubans were the most important res important sources of emotional support and the second most important source of practical support among newly arriving Cubans. The findings of Cuban refugees living in Texas can be attributed to, back to La Lucha and nece Necesidad or Necessity. Social relations are everything in the community and helping your compatriots thrive is an essential part of La Lucha and being Cuban. Today, La Lucha discourse has become imperative in the Cuban community living in Mexico due to the removal of the wet foot, dry foot policy by the Obama administration and the implementation implementation of migration policies like migrant protection protocols by the Trump administration that have made asylum almost impossible along with cartel extortion in Mexico. Additionally, the Trump administration promoted a demagogical discourse contributing to the idea and stereotype of immigrants as criminals, which furthered the migratory crisis we see today. It is important to emphasize that Cuban migrants who migrated under the wet foot, dry foot policy had a completely different migratory experience in comparison to recent asylum seeking Cubans who are forced to wait in Mexico while their asylum cases are being processed. Because of this, the political ideology of Cuban Americans offers vastly 
from those who are seeking to migrate to the U.S. Many Cuban Americans align themselves with the Republican Party and the cons conservative ideology regarding immigration. While most of the Cubans living in Mexico documented President Trump and the Republican Party and embraced and look forward to demo demo democratic leadership. Conclusion, excuse me, conclusions and re final reflections. Nevertheless, there is hope that there can be a structural shift on the in the immigration ideology to a more sensible and humane, one that aims to understand and emphasize the human experience in migration. In Cuba, Cubans are victims of a political dictatorship that impedes them from having access to options that allow them to develop socially and economically. Subsequently, our preliminary observations allows us to understand that the Cuban migrants mainly migrate in search of better economic opportunities and <clears throat> individual liberties. However, La Lucha has allowed a discourse of empowerment and will to survive all obstacles that they face living on the border. Our paper aims to contribute to new research, which emphasizes the benefit, 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 I'm sorry, that migrants have on host communities as opposed to the dim, demonization and stigmatization that is often found in the press. In the case of Ciudad Juarez, Cuban migrants have brought diversity and a new source of life to a once struggling downtown Juarez. Cuban migrants have contributed to the economy of downtown Ciudad Juarez, which struggled to fully recuperate after the Great Recession of 2008. The arrival of Cuban migrants in downtown Juarez represents a new sense of hope and urban diversity that is urgently needed in El Centro de Juarez to revitalize the economy. Lastly, this research contributes to the emergent development that of the migrant Cuban community that arrived in Ciudad Juarez as a result of the migrant caravans after the implementation of the migrant protection protocols. The research provides historical context at a time in which the image of the migrant has been criminalized and stereotyped around the world through the press and politicians as is referenced by SLAC 2019. The Cuban migrants merit admiration and respect by the locals, including the media, which should seek to understand the historical circumstances of the Cuban society. The migration movement is the result of the political instability in Cuba since the collapse of the USSR economy in the U.S. or in the United. I'm so sorry. In the 90s. Therefore, the Cubans who arrive in El Centro de Ciudad Juarez have a new ambition to overcome barriers to achieve economic prosperity. This new population is important in the future of development, future development of El Centro de Juarez that has been forgotten by the Juarez governmental administration. Today, the COVID-19 vaccines represent hope for the Cuban migrants who want to continue their journey of prosperity even if they are denied entry into the United States. Most of them are willing to live their life in, in war, as, <clears throat> which provides increased opportunities in comparison to Cuba. As an informant optimistically recounted in Spanish, Despesos de Toro Lucky Pase para Yeager y Juarez Nari me saca de aquí yo siguiera la chunda por mi biemester y por ayer a mi familia. Quote from interview fragment. This will be the end of this document and I'm so sorry that my, here's more photos. My Spanish is horrible. I am terribly sorry if I've mispronounced anything. And here are the references. Thank you.